blast bad or your heating element causing you issues might have the solution coming right here Everybody, Chris Sargent Taz here, and today I'm going to go over replacing your glass bed with another viable option. Um, a lot of people have reported that they have like a, a dipping or it's not level. I think I've come across a really nice solution um, from Fulament. Full disclosure, it was given to me along with the heat pad and the insulating pad for the purpose of review and install videos. So no money has changed hands. I've just gotten it for review and to set it up. So getting past that, we're gonna go on to the ease of setup and its use and maybe why you'd wanna get one. Um, where am I at? So hopefully I'm gonna have a little little picture right here showing you the plate because I did a prior video and I screwed up so keep that in mind um, unfortunately I have installed it already so the next part of this video is gonna be me doing the install um, I'll give you some specs on the sheet let's see it's a uh, five millimeter T6 6601 aluminum 300 by 300 it's 0 0.05 millimeter flatness and if you get the magnetic version it's going to be N52 neo magnets um, they're supposed to come out with a non-magnetic non version um, I, that's what I, I don't have that one for review so this is the one with the magnets in it even though I'm not going to be using a flex plate on it um, I'm going to go with using a PEI sheet as you'll see in the video um, I kind of like it better, but that's preference. So take what you may from that. Um, the install wasn't really difficult. In the video, my board's different. So my board's an SKR V1.3. So it's still going to be the same with regard to, you're going to obviously swap out the thermistor and it doesn't matter which two wires you use, there are gonna be two red ones that come in. So that's not gonna make any issue of what you're doing. And either one will be able to hook up where you put them. So when you'll see in the video, I'll go over it a bit. Um, hopefully this can help you out. Uh, I, I found that I actually like the bed a lot. Um, I, I, I did love my original glass bed, don't get me wrong. Um, the, I, I have the original actually, this is the version one. So, I actually had the chrome logo in the center, and but I was having trouble with my heating pad. So my heating pad has failed, even though I did have strain relief. I don't know what's quite wrong with it, because it seems to be fine. I just think the pad went, and I figured while I was doing it, I'd um, check out the aluminum bed release from Fulament and see how, how that worked out. And it's still kind of in the testing stage. Um, he's supposed to be releasing it. I don't have a date yet. So we'll keep that in mind as well. Um, but we'll get into rolling the install video.
So as you can see, I've already pulled the case cover off. Um, it's a total of six screws. Um, I didn't think you need to see that. Take all four of those off and access the SSR on the back of your printer. And what we're going to do is first you need to get all the tape and all the um, extra securing of the wires out of the way. So I'm going to cut it off carefully with a razor blade. Safety third. So here you go. But yeah, I'm going to get that off. This just makes it easier to trace down the wires to make sure um, you're going to have two red. Those are your power and then you're going to have the thermistor wire. So what I'm, I need to remove the thermistor wire so I need to back up across the top set of wires where it travels. And um, get that out of the way. careful not to unplug your uh, your y-axis sensor either because that kind of gets in the way and they're both the same color wiring which can be interesting if you don't realize what you're looking at so as you can see I have the SKR 1.3 but it operates the same as your stock board so you're going to remove the thermistor from the board itself but so when I trace down from the bed itself so that wire comes out now we're going to undo the power from the power supply it's going to be the second pin from the bottom so on the second line we're going to unscrew that be mindful there's another wire in there that you're going to have to keep and not lose that's the first one I pulled off and then you got to take the screw completely out because those are locking connectors that are through the screw so that got to come out so the first one's undone now we're gonna go to the SSR and dummy forgets to remove the cover here in a second I can get it off but I'm not gonna be able to get it out because obviously it's connected so it's through the screw so you're gonna need to take the cover off and then unscrew it And then just run the wires out through the little port. This is all for your heat pad. Um, depending on how you're doing this, I mean, you could leave it attached if you're reusing your heat pad. I'm replacing it because I was having trouble with my heat pad. So this is why I'm going through the process of replacing the heat pad itself. And I dropped the camera. Whoops. So you run the wires back through the two red and the black thermistor wire. Careful not to pull them too hard or pull them off the plate. lock the wires in place so they're not falling all over the place like I said it doesn't matter which red one you put onto the SSR either one's gonna work so put the screw back through the actual connector
And then I'll catch myself in a minute. I got it up on the angle, but I'm going to turn it down. See how I turn it down? So it's facing outward, so you can put the cap back on. So yes, yeah, so it's, it's actually going to go back to the way it was originally. Cap goes back on. That's good to go. Get your screw ready, put your screw through connector. And that attaches back to the power supply. So now all the power is going to be hooked up if I don't drop the screw first. Make sure you put that other wire back on properly so that the blade actually locks in because you don't want that coming loose. This actually goes to your on off switch is what that one actually controls just so we know what that is. It's nice and tight. Flip your cover back down to where it snaps into place and stays. Tuck your wires up. Now you're going to run your thermistor back to your main board so it can register. Let's speed this up a little bit. So this plugs back into your bed thermistor location. pretty much all set aside from doing some wire cleanup and um, putting your case back.
well as you can see it was pretty straightforward installing it um, it wasn't that hard um, the biggest thing was obviously getting it back to being level and as you'll see in the next clip that I'm gonna throw up I actually did first layer porn for you guys I'm gonna have to edit part of it out because it's got an image that people might find offensive so I'll take it out but you'll see that it actually did actually print properly um, I found it seems to heat up a bit quicker being aluminum than the glass I didn't scientifically do this I'm not gonna say but compared to this glass version my start times are way quicker now on my on my um, other printer so with the same file and that kind of thing it seemed like my bed came up to temp a lot quicker it, it just it rides really nice so obviously doing the adjustments is going to improve anything even with your old bed so you're making sure your eccentric nuts and your wheels are properly spaced and it doesn't have any rock or play in it that's going to make a difference um the plate worked really well the magnet actually works really well i put a scraper on it just to see if it would hold while it was printing and it grabbed the it grabbed the scraper really well so if you do have a magnetic plate you want to put on it's already got set up for it that way on the magnetic version uh, I, like I said I don't have the non magnetic version to play with so it is what it is but overall I thought it was a really good product um, he shipped it in a nice box it had everything I needed to get going so the only thing I screwed up I was going to put aluminum wheels on it uh, leveling wheels but for some reason I bought the ones that fit the ender not the artillery because the artillery ones are actually quite a bit thicker so your normal everyday ender type it's not gonna be the same bolt size these are bigger so my aluminum le leveling wheels didn't fit I put my old ones back on so that went that plan but overall like I said like the product I thought it was really good um, the plate seems nice and level I took in three or four different measurements across it verified with a flashlight and I don't have any deflection at all on the surface so it came out to be a nice surface to work with with I attached a PEI sheet with uh, picture frame clips instead of binder clips because there's not a lot of space along the gantry and if you catch one of those clips when it's printing it's a nightmare and they're also if they push in too far you wind up catching your nozzle so I want the binder clips because it's really shallow and if it does go across it it'll just hop over and kind of skip across and you're not going to be ruining your print or ruining your your nozzles because it usually doesn't hit that far anyways it's a really shallow as opposed to a binder clip where it could get pushed all the way on and now you've lost two or three millimeters of usable bed area that you're going to run into it if you do it wrong so that's my advice on, on putting a PEI sheet on there uh, you can obviously use the 3M tape to do that as well um, I did it on the previous videos as you had seen before if you've watched or if you haven't you can go and look at those but I did put PEI sheet on a glass bed um, I didn't have a problem with level on my glass my glass was actually fine on both of my version 1 and version 2 artillery so but I've shown people how to level off with a PEI sheet and using the stickers was the way to go to get it on there right um, I prefer to be able to remove it if I want to just in case I can always go back and forth or I can take it off and do a really good cleaning of it because um, you sometimes get a print that just gets stuck onto something and you don't want to be scrubbing on your bed rubbing it down and trying to grab it off because you're going to throw something on a kilter and ruin up ruin your more or less your your set printer you're gonna have to go back and readjust everything if you have to wind up scraping something hard or or wiping it down hard um, I think the only thing I had that was weird was I had to readjust my sensor on uh, on the y-axis for some reason I think I might have bumped it when I was actually taking it apart but I'm not 100% sure but initially it, when I first started it wasn't quite trivic in the sensor so I had to push the sensor up a little bit I think it might have actually gotten pushed out during my process of 
taking it apart, so it might have been my own fault. I don't think it was nothing to do with the plate. So overall, I'd give this, you know, an A+. Plus. Everything's tight. Everything works nice. It's a level surface. The magnets work really well. Um, you couldn't ask for a better replacement bed, in my opinion. So hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you haven't yet, give me a like and subscribe. Every little bit helps. I'm trying to get some more of these videos out as I can. Sometimes time or lack of ideas for content are there because there's a million videos I could do trying to get them wrapped around to where I want to plan them out and not print is a whole other story because I actually use all my printers currently right, right at the moment for like maybe the last four hours I haven't had a print order so they're not running but usually when I get the print orders they're running 24 7 so um, like I said hopefully I can get some more out on the artillery or some other printers such as the Ender I have two of those as well I also have the resin printer which is behind me over here I have the El Mars, which I need to do some type of review on and I am waiting on a Saturn too so hopefully soon um, once again thanks for watching and see ya